All right, everyone. Good morning. It is Saturday. We are here with the beautiful Reverend Sheila Tillich. I am Melissa, and we are here this today uh, to join you, and hopefully you'll join the conversation. So uh, we have a full moon going on right now in Gemini. So if you're feeling it, uh, definitely take time to rest and recuperate, because this is going to be a very, very powerful um full moon it's the last one of this year so there's going to be a lot of clearing out and uh so for many of us we're going through a lot of changes that are um overwhelming or uh a little you know fear-based so i love today that we're going to be talking about how to let the love in and how to love in a way that is uh, beneficial for everyone involved. So this is a, a really good topic. And I'm going to be honest with you, Sheila, I was thinking about it in the shower this morning. And it was a little, um, it was a little uh, scary for me. It was a little disconcerting for me. So I was thinking about, you know, what are all the topics that kind of go into this topic? So um, I think this is a really uh, appropriate conversation to have this last full moon where many people have cleared out past situations and past relationships and, you know, things that no longer serve them in a way that may feel overwhelming or uncertain. So it's, um, it's big. And I, I love that we're coming together and having these conversations. So good morning, ladies. Good morning, Cynthia. Good morning, Joan. And one of the things that we love to do on coffee with Sheila and Melissa, and today I have water because I didn't have enough time. I actually drank all my coffee this morning. <laughs> It's been a lot. So um, so I have water today. But uh, we, we like to get the feedback. We like to have you join the conversation, ask your questions, ask for clarity, and whatever that means for you. So please feel free. Good morning, Lori, to um, join our conversation. But before we get started, Sheila, I know we've got a beautiful event coming up that I'm really looking forward to with uh, the, the joint uh, communities coming together of the Lightworkers Connection Circle and the Lemurian Sisterhood. So would you just kind of describe to us a little bit about what that is and why we're coming together? Absolutely, absolutely. So the Lemurian Sisterhood is about um, stepping into your divineness. And we usually, I try to at least, have an event once a month. And of course, this is the winter solstice, all right? So, and that means the longest, darkest night all right when we think about the winter solstice uh depends on what hemisphere you're in but we we like to celebrate that and of course the light workers connection is about all of our beautiful lights combining together our energy so we're going to bring the event together bringing the light workers together with all the sisterhoods and we are going to have a special night because we have reverend Teresa schaefer a registered medium speaker she's a wonderful um uh event presenter and workshop presenter she's going to be our presenter for our winter solstice again this is going to be the second year in a row so it's a winter solstice celebration and we're bringing both of the groups together on tuesday night at eight o'clock and you can find my uh your the information in the chat box you can actually join that unfortunately i'm sorry gentlemen but it's for women only However, the good thing is that anything that I do, any of my events, has all the highlights in my new inner circle, which is on my website. If you haven't had a chance to check out my new design on my website, please go there. I've been told by many, and I'm very, very grateful, that it's more user-friendly. All right, And uh, it's a great way to you know, look at all the different things that I do. <clears throat> so you can go, actually go into the, the inner circle and asking that's a membership program where I just started to put all, a lot of the stuff that I've done in the past. Uh, a lot of people want to know it, you know, the learning part, the actual meditations and the energy exchanges so we can stay connected. So we never have to be alone. Right. So that is also on my website. So check it out. Lots yeah, of that's, things. Oh, that's really, really cool. Um, you know, I, I know that, um, we're all on a journey and everybody's at the, a different place on their journey and you never know what you're going to need. So I love that your inner circle is there to kind of support 
uh, folks as to where they are on their journey. And then they can go in and kind of find what they need or uh, some support. So I think that's beautiful. So check out Sheila's Inner Circle if you have not done that. Uh, good morning, Sharon. Yes, you made it. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Um, so Sharon, yes. Hello. hello. And Joan and Cynthia, hello. Hello, I know. I wanted to say hi too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I'm just sharing this on the different groups so people can find us. But um, let's let's start, uh, Sheila. So um, what um, what does it mean? What does it mean to share your love? And how do we do that? You know, you know, we talk about compassionate love, but first we need to have self-compassion, meaning taking care of ourselves and loving ourselves, warts and all, as I always say, love in giving love is synonymous. In other words, if you love yourself, you can easily give it away. And that's what's so important today in society is to show the love and the compassion. And first of all, it begins with yourself. So bringing love and compassion together for yourself. And as you do that, you start to resonate. We always talk about this frequency out into the world. All right. So you're giving that love back to humanity at the same time. Others are giving back to you. You know, this time of the year is very important to kind of understand, you know, um, what it's really all about. You know, and of course, we have all the denominations. We have all the, the religious festivities and, you know, the family functions and stuff like that. But it's it's about doing this 365 days a year, loving and giving loving and giving 365 days a year and it begins with you once it begins with you and then you can give it to others and you can give it and receive it back and you know um so if you're just joining us i, I mentioned that i was thinking about this uh topic in the shower this morning because it's a big big idea um i know that for many of us we have given our love to, in the past and it's not been received or honored in the way that it should have been. So it gets so tricky to kind of keep putting yourself out there or keep loving in a way that's beneficial. And I think Sheila, that was what I came to this morning that it starts inside, you know, um, if we can love ourselves authentically, if we can love ourselves warts and all, um, then it's so much easier to, um, love others and all of their, uh, challenges and all of their warts and all of, you know, so the idea that I came to, good morning, Mandy, good morning, good morning, Leona, good morning, lady. Um, yeah, what I, what I came to was it comes down to the ability to be vulnerable. And for many of us, we struggle with being vulnerable. And Sh Sheila, I'm going to be honest with you. I think this topic triggered me a little today. Oh, and I got, yeah. Oh, and I got, yeah. I got yeah, a little... all of our own issues and the tissues, and we don't want anybody to know. Just like we don't want to let anybody know what those warts are and talk about those warts. But that's what it is. It's about loving yourself. You know, being vulnerable and taking the risk. And I learned years ago in recovery, you know, your most precious gift is being vulnerable and taking the risk to let others in, to be intimate, into me see. And, and sometimes, you know, it, you know, because of all those issues that we have in our tissues, you know, we've been hurt. We've been, we, we've, we've been uh, manipulated, you know, we've been controlled. And that's also, we feel so stuck. We feel so powerless there's that word again, powerless. How do we get out of it? And I always go back to go within. You need to go within. Find the self-love within. You know, and a lot of people say, how do I do that? How do I do that? And that's what we talk about all the time. We give tips and tools of how to do that. You know, go into your heart center. You know, just be quiet. Sit in the present. Doing all these little tricks that we talk about. Get out of ourselves. You know, we talk about journaling. And that's one of the biggest, one of the biggest, biggest tools you can use is that no matter what you do, you can always write it down, meaning whatever's happening in your life. And it's, it's part of training yourself to do different and to find the better part of you. And by journaling every single day, which I've had journals for 35 years, I have a whole, 
oh, tote full of journals. And I can look back and see how far I've grown. But it's a very important tool. When you feel vulnerable and you feel hurt and you don't know what to do, sit down, be quiet, listen, you know, right, I feel crappy. Why am I feeling crappy? Now this moon that's here, you know, it's the last full moon of the year. Yes, but it's always powerful. And we always go back to the earth center, connecting ourselves with the earth. How do we do that? You know, and we are electromagnetic beings and we can connect ourselves to the frequency of the earth and then be able to work our way in, in our lives, living that way too. So back to yourself, you know, do what you don't want to do and don't do what you want to do. In other words, you got to do different. Do different. And you yeah. find it balance inside in that love and then you can receive it from others and feel more comfortable you know in your own skin when you get a compliment oh yeah 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 whatever thank you thank you and give the compliment back sincerely give it not so that you you know get something from the person oh i'm gonna you know um butter them up like that but actually look at the love you have for other people you know and realize it's so important these days, especially when there's so many people hurting out there. And they're so, you know, they're so stuck in the fear and the drama of what media and everything else is coming towards them. This electromagnetic field is so vibrant and so impactful to everything that we do. So go within, be quiet. Take care of yourself first. Feel Thank yourself. you. Yeah, you know, and for those of you um, who have not journaled or for those of you who uh, have, are not used to putting pen to paper, what I will say about that is that can be profound. Um, like Sheila was saying, she's been journaling for 35 years. And what I discovered was that my journaling and going back and looking at my journals, um, I was seeing the patterns. I was seeing the self-sabotage. I was seeing where I needed to do different, where I needed to make different choices and decisions. So good morning, Mandy. Good morning, honey. Welcome. So that is where journaling can be so powerful that in a moment you might not know that you just need to get that emotion out and onto paper. It gets it out of your emotional body. But then um, down the road, it can continue to be beneficial by having it on paper because you can look at, you know, over this past year, what have I been feeling? What have I been choosing to do? What have I been um, maybe ignoring or not looking at, or maybe how have I been self-sabotaging? How have I been making the same choices and expecting different results? And it hasn't happened because it's not going to. That's the definition of chaos. And that's where you're stubbing your own toe over and over again. And so it can be very powerful to, you know, if you're not someone that's used to sitting down and, and writing, I would encourage you to Give that a try in this next year. Really, you know, even it doesn't have to be daily. It can be weekly. It can be monthly. But just sitting down and being very honest with yourself and putting it on paper because no one's going to see it. And you can be as honest and as vulnerable as you want to. And there's no, um, uh, there's no um, reaction. There, there's, you know, no uh, pushback. So um, I think that's a beautiful tool. And then I think the other tool that um, I was feeling as you were talking, Sheila, was mirror work. I know that Louise Hayes put out a beautiful book about this years ago. And I was actually talking about this to a friend or um, someone that I've been mentoring through IET and their journey and how doing some mirror work would be beneficial for them because they needed to love themselves. And as I was giving that um help or advice, I was actually hearing uh, in my, you know, from my spirit team, uh, maybe you should be taking your own advice here. And so, well, well that's the whole key. You know, we, <laughs> we can say, you know, you, you got to walk the path, you know, you walk, you, you got to walk the talk. And a lot of people don't know how to do that, you know, and it's it's really hard. And, and also what is a good tool for today, especially with the full moon out there is to do the ceremony. Mm -hmm. Do the ceremony, and of course, you know, the shaman in me, I have to get that out there today. Yeah. You know, very powerful, the energy is released, but no longer serves you. And also, ask for what you want, actually, command and demand, you know. Put it out there into the universe. Put your purchase order out there, as as a Marilyn Harper would always say, Adiranda. Put your purchase order out there, what you want. So, great tools that we have. And mirror work, absolutely. The fear, you know, why I can't look at myself in the mirror. You know, why am I mirroring when, when I when I see something in somebody else and it really upsets me? 
I'm mirroring, it, it's in me. It's like, oh, I don't like that. What is really going on? So then you have the opportunity to change and do different. And ceremony is one way to release and all that, releasing the things that no longer serve you and also things, your dreams up, what your heart's desire is, put it out there, put your purchase order out there because anything is possible, but you have to do the work. So Sheila, if you're finding us for the first time or, or you're just starting on this path, um, you talk about ceremony and, and putting your purchase order out there. What would be a simple ceremony that someone could do if they're just starting? Oh, oh absolutely. Yeah, uh, just take a candle. Look at a candle. Sit at a candle and visualize you, you know, you being part of Mother Earth, visualizing your energy going into the ground and the earth and connect connect there and connect with your heart center with breathing. Uh, that's a great ceremony you can do. And then, of course, the burning ceremony, of course, which we love during the moon or any time, is write things on a piece of paper. Just those things, you know, uh, how you're feeling. I want to release this. I feel anger. You know, I want joy. You know, put what I mean by purchase order. You put things in that you, you want in your life. And also another trick, too, is that you're having a problem with somebody. All right. When you're mirroring, when you when somebody's mirroring something back to you, put that problem down, you know, release that for that other person and also for me you know so there's so many tools that you can do with ceremony that you can write and you can take that on a piece of paper if you can't go outside you can just do it over a seat just burn it over a seat right on a piece of paper and say i release it to the universe i release it to the universe if you can go outside and connect with mother earth and of course it's beautiful today because it's actually snowing out it's pretty out it's pretty out mm -hmm. yeah. outside you can actually do a little ceremony out there a lot of people say i don't have any land i don't know that just go outside take a spoon and dig some dirt up you know and light that over that and just put it and let it let it go out and then just cover it up thank you and go inside and the thing is that you put the energy out into the universe you actually have done something ceremony is connecting with your higher source your higher source and it's really you it's inside and you can do any type that's ceremonies are a lot of people say they think it's you know ritual you know they think it's you know demonic you know they have all these things when you hear ceremony but ceremony is you doing a practice of writing your journey your journal you're doing ceremony to take care of yourself you're you're actually celebrating you doing you during ceremony to celebrate you and that's beautiful and i know that you know sometimes people hear the word ceremony or ritual and they do think elaborate they do think you know ab above and beyond it's so it does it has it can be as simple as simple as simple and you know i want to share that with you um with everyone you know people um you said you know you can do it right in your sink and uh i have I have literally done it, um, you know, um, burned uh, my burning bowl right, you know, by my sink and then uh, set it in my clean sink um, because that would be, you know, a safe place to be burning something in my home uh, right there with the water. But, you know, so that's where it doesn't have to be elaborate. It doesn't have to be uh, four hours long. It can simply be you intending, having an intention and putting that intention out into the universe using a, a candle or or using a, a burning bowl and, and just putting those intentions out there, the intention of what you want to go and the intention of what you want to receive. And I think that's absolutely beautiful that, you know, this doesn't have to be hard. This doesn't have to be uh, big. This can be very simple and it can be um, as simple as you need it to be in your situation. Because I know that when we are... Um, working on giving and receiving love, when we don't feel uh, worthy of love, when we don't feel uh, safe enough to give love, we can't trust that our love will be received. You know, this can be a very, very powerful topic and, a, and, and very, very um, hard to overcome uh, as I uh, am on that journey of trying to overcome it myself. Um, it is it is daunting. It is scary. It is uncomfortable, but it is very very worthy and needed and worth it. Um, as we move forward in this new energy of ascension and all these light codes coming in, uh, we're being um, 
our frequencies are being raised and it's now we're being asked to start meeting those uh, frequency changes by doing the work to raise our vibrational frequency to get into love and compassion uh, maybe unlike we've been in before you know just spreading that love around spreading that joy around being uh, the way showers and the beacons of light but to get there it can be very scary it can be very hard uh, to walk that journey and so I just uh, invite you all, you know, to take whatever piece of this today and, and start that practice for yourself uh, as we go into 2022, going in more loving and lighter so that we can uh, really be the way showers and affect this vibrational frequency that is in the collective. Because I think that we are getting to a point where um, we need it. We need it more than ever, and the people around us need it more than ever. Yeah, you know, um, I also was thinking today of, of what really brings me joy during this time. I, of course, many know I don't turn on media, I don't listen to any of that stuff, but it's the frequency that I live in, or in the things that I do. Like a lot of people have to have the TV on, they have to have the background noise, all this other stuff. And what I do, and I found it really, really cool, is you can go to YouTube. Or if you, you know, if you have the internet, if you have, you know, cable or whatever, turn on the music channel or, or what I like on YouTube is turn on the fireplace, you know, the cracking fireplace. Now you can get instrumental music. You can get the course of beautiful Christmas music, but it's the frequency that's out there. Of course, when we talk about frequency music, you know, you can also get the frequency music on YouTube, play it in the background. It's the frequency that you're living in, and then it goes into yourselves and kind of helps you have that kind of mindset, especially during the season now, you know, and many of us live in the pain because we don't have our family members with us, or it's no longer the way it used to be, or we're living in the past of the hurt of, of things that used to be that no longer is. But the thing is that you can make your own joy, and you can do that in your own environment with the frequency that you're living in. You know, and it, it's very simple. You know, if, if you got a computer, go to YouTube and turn that on and put the fireplace up there and watch the crackling, you know, and but, but. do do the simple things. Do the simple things. No, that's so important, you know, um, just to, to make things so much easier for yourself because this can be a very stressful time of year. So why burden yourself by... Um, feeling woulda, coulda, shoulda, or feeling like you're missing out on something, embody the joy within yourself and, and bring the joy to the people that are around you and that are part of your tribe and that um, do come to you in a, in a way that is beautiful and beneficial. So yeah, sometimes we just have to appreciate who is there and just let who isn't there um, with light and love and, and pray for them as you, you feel called to. But um yeah, it, it, be grateful for what is going on in your life. Be grateful for who has shown up in your life. Um, you know, I uh, I don't have the people that I thought I would have in my life uh, ten years ago. Um, you know, and and it, but it's beautiful, and I appreciate who is here, who is loving me unconditionally, who is supporting me in everything that I do, and I think that you know, the easiest and the most powerful way to get out of any fear-based emotion is to get into gratitude for what is going right. And through that gratitude, you're able to feel the compassion. You're able to get into the love and the love space that may feel daunting or overwhelming um, in this time. So sometimes we just have to pray for those um, people or situations that are no longer in our lives but really embrace who is there, embrace what is going right and make sure that you're recognizing it. You know, sometimes we don't even recognize what's going right because we're so focused on what went wrong. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm reading some of these comments and there it says, uh, uh, Lori put, you know, I'm one of those who has to have the background noise. I don't like the quiet. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of reasons behind that, you know, and, <clears throat> Sometimes it's, it's hard to be quiet and to be in the silence, you know, we have to fill that void, but it's what you put in the background, right? What noise you're listening to, just like in, in the car when I travel, I don't listen to the news. I don't listen to talk radio. I don't, I listen to vibrational stuff. I listen to something educational, 
the same within your home. You can put that music on very, very low, but it's getting that vibration so that you feel more comfortable or feel, you know, so you've got to have a background or you've got to have something there, you know, and it, it'll help you get more centered too. So I hear what you're saying. Matter of fact, I, uh, uh, my brother was the same way, you know, he passed two years ago and he always had to have something in the background. He always had something in the back and, you know, and, and I got so away from it that it, it's very, um, uh, it's uncomfortable for me when I have all the static and everything going on. Also, I'm hard of hearing. I wear hearing aids. So that's why everything in the background noise kind of, uh, kind of magnifies too, you know, but it's so true. Um, <clears throat> so uh, um, it's, it's wonderful living in the love that you are. And, and it starts with you and noise in the background is sometimes, you know, helps us, you know, uh, filter out, you know, what we don't want to know what's going on inside. You know, so I learned that a long time ago, too. Why can't I sit? Why can't I be quiet? Why do I have to have this back? It's like to fill that empty void inside. It's just like everything else when we have, you know, um, uh, many things that we're, we're trying to fill inside, where there's people, places, and things. You know, we have to have that. And then we have to go back and say, why am I feeling that way? Why am I feeling that way? What's Leona has here? Oh, okay. Uh, all right. Yes, that's wonderful. I like that. Thank you, Cynthia. That's wonderful. There's so many wonderful um, uh, things that you can listen to. Um, so Leona says, I've been working on that hopefully once and for all. I have wonderful people in my life, such as the blessings of you ladies. Oh, thank you. There's a pattern where at least once a year I feel left out and not included with my sisters. That's hard. I think I conquer it and then I get triggered. I need to get rid of expectations and understand I need to break the pattern. Bingo. Bingo. Yeah, I like that. I need to break the pattern. Leona, you are such a wise woman. And I am so blessed to have you in my life. I really am. And I love how the angels brought us together. And that's what it's about. It's about, you know, seeking out, being vulnerable, you know, saying those things and seeking out what you need. You know, and, and this evolution time is so powerful of ascension, the abilities that we have to move forward in our life, to look at those patterns that keep you stuck. That's what I love about my practice is helping people get unstuck. Let's look at those things, you know, and, and most of the times it's, it's the issues in the tissues. You know, that's why we love the IET or the unity field and the higher frequency. Now they're there to allow to really get, uh, understand this ascension and how we can, how we can unrelease those patterns that are so embedded in the cellular member, but also what we came in with, you know, so, uh, I love it, Leona. Thank you. And yes, it, we still get triggered all the time. All the time. That's good. Oh, that's good. That's good. Listen to music at work, Lori. But yeah, what type of music yeah. are you listening to? That's the whole key. You know. Yeah, um, and I love that you're sharing it. You're sharing it with people and you're sharing it um, where they don't even recognize they're getting a benefit. <laughs> yes, absolutely. 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 This is great. We only have two minutes left here. I know we did it again, Sheila. I'm so excited. Um, so for those of you um, who joined us a little late, um, Sheila did talk about how the uh, Lemurian Sisterhood and the Lightworkers Connection Circle are going to be joining forces uh, this uh, Tuesday night coming up. So please check out the chat box for the link for, to her events to be able to register. Winter Solstice Celebration. Winter Solstice Celebration. Winter Solstice Celebration. Yeah. And uh, I have uh, classes coming in the spring, and uh, there is the 25% off coupon code uh, holiday 2021 that will expire on the 31st. So if you want to get the classes at a discount, um, you can absolutely do that for the next week and a half or, yeah, two weeks, two weeks. Um, and so that is there. And the, that coupon code will work for readings, 30 minute, 60 minute, or um, one uh, IET session, whether you want to start your IET journey with me or um, grab an, your next session, uh, what, however that works for you. So we are both uh, here in our individual ways, teaming up together to help you uh, in any way that you need as you go through on this very, very important work of uh, getting in connection with spirit and learning how to live in love, how to be love, how to share love and give love um, to yourself, which will then radiate out to everyone and to everyone that you uh, come in contact with and in the vibrational frequency into the matrix 
um, which is why we're all here, really, uh, to, to be uh, connected on that vibrational level. And uh, love is the, the way, love is the oneness. And for those of us who struggle with being vulnerable and with trusting that love is the way, um, that it is okay to love, um, I would absolutely invite you to journal and to look at doing mirror work and to reaching out, reaching out to those who do love you unconditionally and really um, praying for and letting go of the people that you would want to be in your experience, but for whatever reason are not in your experience. And at this time of year, I know that is the hardest one. And all we can do is love them from afar. And that is important to keep loving them from afar, that that love is going into the matrix and they are feeling it, um, whether they're feeling it through their higher self or whether they're feeling it unconsciously, it is important. So um, there we are, there we are. And this is the last time that we're going to be meeting for 2021 and probably for a couple more weeks yet because we have the holidays coming up. So we probably won't be back, but I'm excited about 2022 because it's going to be an amazing, awesome year. Wonderful. We wish you love and happiness as you go forward in bringing in this beautiful new, new year, 2022. So everyone have a beautiful holiday season, whatever holiday that you uh, prescribe to. We are sending you so much love and so many blessings. And yes, yeah, stay tuned. We will be back, but it will be a few weeks. So please enjoy the season. And uh, we love you.